So one of the comments I've gotten on a lot of my color grading tutorials has been asking me to really dive in in DaVinci Resolve and explain how I go about nailing my skin tones each and every time. I've also gotten requests for longer videos and videos in a 16x9 format. So I thought, why not give those all to you guys right now? Let's talk about skin tones, but first, roll intro. What's good, everybody? For those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm an international photographer, content creator, and cinematographer. And today we're going to be looking at skin tones in DaVinci Resolve. And I'm going to show you guys my method on how I nail my skin tones every single time, regardless of the camera, shooting profile, or anything that I'm doing. So I have two examples for you. I have one, which is a Caucasian skin tone, and then I have actually me with a African American or black skin tone. And I'm going to show you guys, I'm even going to make it more complicated with myself. One of the things with black skin tones is when you have a color cast, it is really hard to nail that skin tone properly. So I have a color cast in this video that of myself that I'm going to be editing, but first let's start with this easy one. So here we are in node one. Node one is again, just my basic exposure correction as always. I'm simply going to set my black point to about right there. I like that right there. And then I'm going to drag down right there and I'm gonna raise it up about right here now somebody complained to me, uh, to me about saying that there's no actual values when it comes to curves um, I say right there and right there because I simply grade the way I like it looks I have no specific method so I look at the way I want my image to come off and as long as it does that I'm super happy so this is our basic exposure correction here and I'm gonna add in my saturation through the RGB mixer red and red, green and green, blue and blue and the corresponding values. So you guys can see right there, that's the before and after of the edit. I'm actually gonna drag that down just a little bit more. I'm dragging more darkness in the shadows right there. There's a little more contrast. And then I'm gonna make sure I add in a little bit of mid-tone detail, just a smidge. And that's a more definitive look that I'm going for, right? So now that I have this corrected, what's the first thing we see? What's the problem? She's red. I don't want her to come off as red. I want her to have this warm, natural skin tone, like a regular skin tone that we would see in any cinematic film. So we go here and we add a serial. And then we're gonna go to our vector scope. And in our vector scope, there's a little tab that's right over here. We're gonna make sure we wanna click the show skin tone indicator. You see, it gives us that little line. You're gonna see that importance in a second. So first, let's qualify our skin tones. Make sure our little magic wand is on and boom. I like that. That's a good qualification off the bat. I'm gonna add in a little bit, just the areas where I can add more. And right about there, I'm gonna stop. Now to get rid of some of this noise, I'm gonna adjust the low soft right there. And then I'm going to add in clean whites. And I'm gonna denoise it as well. Clean white just a little bit more to make sure I really get her to stand out in there. Awesome, so that is how I qualify the skin tones. Now the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add a power window. Now this power window just makes only the information in the window show up on the vector scope. And now in our log wheels, we're going to move the offset in the direction to cancel out whatever tone we wanna get rid of, or more so to make it easier for you, we're just gonna move the offset until she's on that line. So I'm gonna look, I'm just gonna move in that direction. You can see I'm adding a warm hue because she was a little cool too. There was like a blue magenta red, a blue and a magenta in there, which kind of made like a red tone. So right about there is the correction. Now, I'm gonna turn off the power window. And I'm gonna turn off the mass selection. Do you see the difference right there? That's what that did. Now, that we have that done, I'm just gonna take out the saturation in her skin just a smidge, because she is a little too overly saturated for me. And again, before, after. Looks nice, that's a nice neutral skin tone, much more balanced, much more natural, much more realistic. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to play with my shadow, mid-tone, and highlight. Now, I always push the same orange color 
into my midtones, always. And then I add a little bit of red in the shadows to represent skin fl blood flow in the skin, not skin flow. Can't have skin flow in your skin. And then I'll zoom in and I'll play with my low range and my high range until that's where I like it. And I feel like right there, you can see the red in her skin right there. It's a nice combination with the low range and the high range. And then the highlights are just gonna be the color of the highlights in the scene. So her skin look like, looks like it's part of the scene. So I'm just gonna push in a little bit of a yellow orange right there, because those are the highlights. I'm gonna play with the high range until I see that come out. You can see the highlight is right on her chest right here. And I feel like now it looks like she's part of the scene. And then again, before and after, and then again, before, and after of a skin correction. So now let's go ahead and look at me, the black skin tone. Now first I have to find a frame of myself I actually like. I'm just gonna use this. I look like a mess, but I'm not gonna worry about it. So again, you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but I definitely can, the overall green tone of this image. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to do an exposure correction. Again, I'm gonna bring back up my waveform, and you're gonna see that I'm very particular when it comes to how I color grade the image of myself. But I like that about right there. I'm gonna bring down that just a smidge, and then I'm gonna tweak my skin tone. So I'm gonna do something like that. I feel like that gives good contrast in the scene, which is what I'm looking for and going for, but my skin is still standing out nicely. I'm gonna add a little bit of a mid-tone detail to add some mid-tone contrast, just about to 22. And then I'm gonna go ahead again in the RGB mixer and saturate. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a node to trick my skin tones. Now, I can already see my issue. I'm just this overly, overly green orange oompa loompa and i think it's the green tones i really don't like in this image so what i'm going to do is i'm going to again qualify my skin tone and what i'm going to tell you is going to happen when i throw on this power window is simple it's probably going to be on the line or a little bit past that line because normally we had to move it to the left i'm going to have to move it to the right this time um, because it's in that green area so i'm just going to go in here and qualify my skin tones you can tell with me, there's a lot to have to qualify generally um, because there's so many different shades on my face. There's the red, there's the green, there's the blue, there's everything. And I also want that to show some of the oranges and the yellows that are in my picture frames. I like the warm accents. I like the teal and orange look. So first thing I'm gonna, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually denoise a bit and then do some clean whites. Maybe a smidge of clean blacks. And so now that I have that done, let's go ahead and throw on the power window. And now I'm just gonna get in only my skin tones in there. That's all I wanna see, just my skin tones. I guess I do have a big head. Then we're gonna go into the vector scope. See what I mean? It's on the line. So we're gonna have to go into the offset. I'm gonna have to move a little bit more in probably the magenta range, but I'm gonna move up. I'm not gonna move completely in the magenta. I'm just gonna move up and right about there, you see my nice natural brown has came back. It's oversaturated brown, but it's a natural brown. Before, I'm green, now I'm neutral. Sorry that the power window came back. Now, I'm gonna desaturate my skin tones because I'm just overly orange. When I pull back that saturation, you can see now I am more neutral in the situation. Now, the one thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, again, Push my midtones in that orange direction. And like I said, it's the same color every time. We can turn that power window back on and turn this on because we can watch this to make sure, because if you are pushing the wrong tone, look it, you'll see it flex away. That's not what we want. So we want to make sure that we're pushing it in the right tone, in the right direction. So we're pushing that orange in there, and I'm pushing a little red in my shadows. Let me see how that looks. And then again, I'm just gonna adjust the low and the high range until I like where it's at. So let's see that low range. Here we go, right about there. And that high range. I'm gonna keep that about right there. And then for the highlights, because I have a daylight coming in, I'm just gonna do a slight bit of a bluish color. And then here we go. So before my skin tones, after my skin tones. 
That's a nice correction from where we were. Now, for some, my skin tones may be a little too magenta. Um, and sometimes I feel that way too. So if I'm coming back in here again, all I have to do is just pull that offset. Pull that, oops, pull the highlights for one. I can pull the highlights out, take away that blue. Then I can just pull the offset a little bit more um, towards that, that middle ground and keep it on that line. And then you go, you see if I turn off the power window. I still think that's overly green. I like the way the skin tones look in more of that offset, of that uh, magenta range. And so that's the correction there. And then all I would do next is I would add a corrector, add another corrector, and you can see that I'm gonna have a nice skin tone to background contrast when I deal, do my teal and orange grade. And that's one of the things I want people to understand is that the importance of a teal and orange color grade or the standard cinematic color grade is not using some LUT that makes the teals teal or the shadows teal and the oranges orange or however those LUTs work. It's using your skin tones and using color science to differentiate yourself from the background. So what we would do here is simply add in cooler tones to our background. So I would drop my reds. bring a little bit of the blue up mm, blue up and then I might even just drop I just did that dramatic correction because I want to drop the the shadows in there a bit and then about right there and see the, again this is just a sloppy grade I would obviously go back here and make sure that I do the correction for the light to make sure that that's not in there because um, that just came in when I qualified my skin tones and um, I might have to actually just use like a little mask right here to just like boom 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 and then I would invert it to get rid of that and then I would turn that off you can see here as long as my head doesn't move in that area I should be fine but just to show you how it will look um, that is probably my prime example and you can see again I have that nice skin tone contrast and again I'm just gonna bring down the saturation of my skin a bit because it was just too powerful so we went from this to this as our graded image. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, share a comment down below on what type of tutorial you want me to make next with respect to DaVinci Resolve, or just send me some love, I always appreciate that. Hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications if you already have not. Be sure to follow me on my social media, the links are in the description down below, and of course, as always, the YouTube fam. Their links are in the description down below. If you are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up. Remember, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Live, love, laugh, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.